Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Today is Tuesday, April the 13th, and this is your phonics lesson for today. It's a little bit late. I'm sorry. Um, my daughter got sick yesterday, and we had to go to the doctor's office, and so we are at home today and tomorrow, um, and so I was a little behind getting my video up today. I apologize, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Today's phonics lesson is super fast. So we are on lesson 23 today in unit five. The learning targets for today are, I can identify, ooh, that says I can can. <laughs> I can identify the present, past, and future tenses. I can read words with different sounds for the O spelling, and I can close read the story looking for the enemy. So let's start today by reviewing the tenses. We have present tense, past tense, and future tense. And remember, present tense means it's happening right now. And sometimes a present tense verb ends with an S. Past tense means it already happened. It's already happened in the past. And we know that it's a past tense verb because it almost always ends with an ED. And a future tense verb means that it has not happened yet. It's going to happen at a later point. And we usually use the word will in front of it. So let's look at this chart and we're going to work on filling in those blanks together. So we have the present, the past, and the future. The subject of the sentence is on the left side and the predicate part or the verb part is on the right side. So for the present tense, it says, I lift, okay, like I lift a box. How would I say that if it were past tense? Yeah, it would be I lifted a box. And how would we say that in the future? I will lift a box, good. So the second predicate on our chart is walked. Well, that's in the past. How do I say it right now? She walks, good, like she walks to the store. Past tense is she walked. And if she's gonna do it tomorrow, it is she will walk, very good. All right, the third predicate is will sneeze in the future. So if he does it right now, he sneezes. If he did it yesterday, he sneezed. Good. The third, or sorry, the fourth predicate is pick. You pick a strawberry off the vine. It's happening right now. If you did it yesterday, you would say you picked a strawberry off the vine. And if you're gonna do it tomorrow, you will pick a strawberry off the vine. Very good. All right, the next predicate is will smell. We will smell the flowers tomorrow. We will smell the flowers. What if we're doing it right now? We smell, good. And if we're gonna do it, if we did it yesterday, we would say we smelled, very good. Uh, I think that's supposed to say we right here. Jog, so we jog. So yesterday we jogged. What if we're doing it today? It would just be we jog. If we're gonna do it tomorrow, it would be we will jog. And then the last one is lift again. They lift the carriage. If they did it yesterday, it would be they lifted the carriage. And if they're gonna do it tomorrow, it will be they will lift the carriage. There you go. So we have I lift, I lifted, I will lift, she walks, she walked, she will walk, he sneezes, he sneezed, he will sneeze, you pick, you picked, you will pick, we smell, we smelled, we will smell, it jogs, it jogged, it will jog, they lift, they lifted, they will lift. 
So remember, if it's present tense, it's happening right now. If it's past tense, it happened in the past and it almost always ends with an ED. And if it happens in the future, we usually use the word will in front of it. So remember that the focus of this unit, unit five, is on vowel sounds and the way they are spelled. So we know several different ways the letter O can sound. Let's review those different sounds, okay? Our first one is ah, like in hop, drop, and modest. The second sound we know for the letter O is O, like open, hotel, and no. And the third sound we know for the letter O is uh, like in sun, front, and coming. So let's turn to work the worksheet 23.1. And there is a story containing words with the tricky spelling O. We're gonna read the words with the underlined O only, okay? So let's look at worksheet 23.1. Right, this is the tricky O spelling. We are going to write the words with the tricky spelling O that sound like aw under stop. The words with the tricky spelling O sounding like O under hotel. And the words with the tricky spelling O sounding like a uh in from. Sort only the words in which the O is underlined. So if you see a word that has an O in it, but it is not underlined, you are not going to sort that word. So here is the story. Last month, my older brother won second place in a hot dog eating contest. To win, he had to eat the most hot dogs. Well, my brother ate lots and lots of hot dogs. Most of the people competing found it impossible to eat as many. At the closing ceremony, my brother was given a ton of money, 1000 in cash, and a trophy of a golden hot dog. My brother slipped the money in his pocket and smiled modestly as people took his snapshot. It was a fine moment for my brother. So the first word that is underlined is the word month. And the O in the word month sounds like uh, like in the word from. So it has been written under the third column, sounded like uh, as in from. The next word you're gonna do is older, then brother, then one, then second. Remember, if the word does not have an underlined O, oh, you are not going to make the sort. You're not gonna do the sort with it. Okay, good luck. Okay, so let's do a few of these together. Okay, the next word is older, older. What sound does that say? Does it say aw ah or o? Oh? It says o, oh, so I'm gonna put the word older right there on the middle column where it says o oh, as in hotel. Make this a little bit bigger, okay. So the next word is, you know, maybe we should highlight the word after we do it. We did month, we did older. Let's do brother, brother. What sound does that O make? Brother, does it say aw, oh, brother? Does it say O, oh, brother? Or does it say a, uh, brother? It says, uh, like, br oops, I didn't mean to do that. It says, uh, like, brother, like, from. Good. All right, the next word is one. I won the game. Is it aw, uh, won, o, oh, won, or a, uh, won? One, like uh, we're gonna put it there. The next word is 
second, second. Does it say ah, second, o, second, or a, uh, second? Let's say second. Good. The next word is hot. Hot, hot, hot. Does it say ah, hot, o, oh, hot, or a, uh, hut? It says ah, like hot. All right, the next one is dog, dog. Does it say ah, like stop? Does it say dog, o, oh, dog, or a? Uh? Doug. It says ah, so we're going to put it in the first column. And we'll do one more together. Contest. Contest. Does it say ah, contest, o, oh, cone test, or a uh, contest? It says ah. So we're going to put it right there. Okay. All right. So you are going to finish the rest of the underlined words in this passage and put do just what I did. Say ah in the word, o oh in the word, and a uh in the word to make sure that you know where it belongs. All right, so we are gonna do our story now. So now is a good time if you need to take a break, if you need to go potty or get a drink or just do some stretches, now is a good time to do that. So pause the video if you need to and then come back quickly. Okay, so we are going to read the story today, Looking for the Enemy. Today, we're gonna to read about King Alfred's knights looking for the enemy. Who is King Alfred's enemy? Do you remember? Yeah, it's King Henry. So King Henry is King Alfred's enemy. So we are gonna review some tricky words that are going to be in today's story. And I'm going to show you some sentences. And what I want you to do is I want you to read the sentence quietly to yourself and see if you can decide what word is supposed to go in the blank. Okay, so Amy is my best. What word would make sense there? Amy is my best friend. So friend is the word that would make sense in that sentence. The word friend has the letters IE in it. And you may think that the letters IE in friend would be pronounced I or E, but they actually stand for the eh sound, friend. It's not a friend or a friend, it's a friend. Okay, so I am, she is right. What word would make sense there? What about the word, this word? This tricky word is in the very last sentence of our story today. So I want you to use your best word skills to stretch this word out. What is this word? So you might think that this word would be pronounced as Ear, but it's actually pronounced more like sh, -er, sh -er. So the word is sure. I am sure she is right. So let's go over some spellings that you were going to see in today's story. We have the A sound, like in place explain and escape and we have it two different ways we have a consonant e a consonant e and we have a i and they both say a we have the o sound with the o w spelling like in own 
and slowly. And then we have the word low. We have the O that makes the a uh sound in pardon. And the A makes the schwa uh sound in astonished and managed. Good. Our vocabulary for today's lesson are the words recalling, which means you're just remembering. Prepped, which means that you have moved quietly and carefully. It's the past tense of the word creep. And to rejoice, which means to celebrate. So when, let's read our story. Okay, so we are on a new story today in our reader, Sergus. Today we are going to read chapter 14, Looking for the Enemy, and it starts on page 110. Hold on one second. I want to make sure that I hit the button. Okay. I would hate to be playing this and you not be able to hear it. Looking for the Enemy. My good knight, what is happening? asked an astonished King Alfred as he got up. Your majesty, said Sir Gus, pardon me, but I am not quite sure. It seems that King Henry and his knights did not come as friends, for I saw the Black Knight place you in this dungeon. Sir Gus tried to explain as best he could what had happened. However, he could not explain why he had woken up in the jousting arena to find everyone else asleep. How are you feeling? asked the king, recalling that Sir Gus had fallen from his horse in the joust. Well, I am still standing, replied Sir Gus. We had better get out of here and find out what is happening, said the king. Yes, said Sir Gus, by all means, we must find out what is happening. But deep down, Sir Gus was not sure he really cared to find out what was happening. Slowly, Sir Gus and the king crept out of the dark dungeon. They set off to find King Alfred's knights. At the same time, the king woke up. So did everyone in the palace and the arena. Slowly, people began to realize someone had betrayed King Alfred. It wasn't long before King Alfred and Sir Gus found the other knights in the palace. Your Majesty, I rejoice to find you well, said Sir Tom, as he knelt and kissed the king's ring. We feared King Henry had taken you from us. It seems he was planning to take over your kingdom. Yes, I am alive, all thanks to Sir Gus, explained the king. He found me in the palace dungeon. I am still not sure why he found me asleep in my own dungeon. That is easy to explain, said Sir Tom. King Henry's wizard cast a spell that made everyone sleep. It would seem that somehow the spell did not harm Sir Gus, and he was able to wake you up. In fact, everyone has woken up, said Sir Ed. <clears throat> What about King Henry and his knights? asked King Alfred. Where are they? Do not fear, your majesty, said Sir Ed. We will find King Henry and his knights, and we will see that they are punished for what they have done. King Alfred's knights looked high and low, and in every corner, for King Henry and his knights. But they were nowhere to be found. Somehow, they had all managed to escape but at least King Alfred was safe. So what word did the author use to describe King Alfred at the beginning of the story? Let's go back and look. The very first line, my good knights, what is happening? Asked an astonished King Alfred as he got up. What does that word mean? The word astonished means surprise. So King Alfred was surprised when he woke up. 
Who and where does King Alfred explain who found him? So who found him? Sir Gus found him and where did he find King Alfred? In the dungeon. So King Alfred says that Sir Gus found him in the palace dungeon. Who was able to explain what had happened to King Alfred? We know that it wasn't Sir Gus. Let's go back and look. Here it is. That it's easy to explain, said Sir Tom. So Sir Tom is the one who was able to explain what had happened. All right. So, I don't, we're not going to do this part. All righty. You have one more worksheet to work on today, and it's very similar to the one that we just did with the story. You're going to look at the word within the sentence. Here, I'll just play this for you. Okay, this is tricky O spelling words. You're going to sort the words by sound. You're going to write the words that have the ah sound, like under hop. Write the words that have O sound, like under open. And write the words that have the uh sound, like under sun. Here is your chart that reminds you the three ways that you can say the O spelling. We have ah like hop, drop, and spot. We have O, like open, hotel, and no. And a, uh, like in sun, front, and coming. The first one has been done for you as an example. Number one says, I need to find my father and mother. So the O in the word mother says a, uh, like in sun. So they wrote it underneath that heading in the column. You are going to do the same thing for two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Look at the word that is underlined that has the O spelling and determine does the O say ah like hop, O like open, or a uh, like sun. And then you will use your text box to put it in the correct column. Okay, so that is what you're going to do on worksheet 23.3. So that is all that we have for today. Our learning targets are, were, I can identify the present, past, and future tense. I can read words with different spelling, or different, I am messing this all up, with different sounds for the O spelling, and I can close read the story looking for the enemy. So you are going to have two worksheets to work on today about the tricky O spelling, and you are going to have grammar work on verbs today. So make sure that you watch the video mini lesson included in the grammar work later today. And um, no spelling today, just the two phonics worksheets and grammar, okay? And I hope you guys have a great afternoon, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Oh, oh, wait, no, I can't do that yet because I have to do the word of the day. I forgot to do it for the wit and wisdom video, but we need to do that. And I also need to remind you guys, you were supposed to be doing 60 minutes a week in Amplify. So today's word is hand. Hand is the word of today. Um, you're supposed to be doing 60 minutes a week in Amplify, and there are many, many of you not doing any at all. And so you're getting a zero out of 60 every week for not doing your Amplify. And you were also supposed to be reading an epic for 20 minutes a day. That's 100 minutes a week. So starting this week, it's going to be included in your grades as well. You're going to get however many points for however many minutes you are reading in Epic. Okay, So that means between Monday and Friday, you should read for 100 minutes in Epic. If you only read for 50, then guess what grade you're getting? 50. If you only read zero minutes, guess what grade you're getting? Zero. 
So you need to make sure that you're, you're doing your 60 minutes a week in Amplify and your 100 minutes a week in Epic, okay? All right, I'll see you guys on um, Wednesday. Bye.